Hey kayakers, it's Cliff with Kayak Trails and Tails. Hey, today we're going to paddle in Flower Mound, Texas. It's in the DFW Metroplex. We're going to paddle the Twin Coves uh, Park, which it's Twin Coves, very nice lake to paddle. And it's in Flower Mound and it's on the shores of Lake Grapevine, but a very protected area and a great place to paddle. So when you pull up to the uh, gate to enter the park, it's just an automated attendant. Uh, basically, you, you put your credit card in there and uh, pay your $10 uh, day use fee, or, or you can even sign up for your annual pass here uh, at the $45 for residents and $75 for non-residents. So we pass the gate and uh, driving back into the park here, it's about a mile ride uh, down winding, uh, curly, winding, hilly, uh, forested roads. So. Uh, Real pretty drive driving back here. You, you know that something good is coming because uh, uh, just because of the drive and the hills and the trees and everything coming out here. It's uh, again, it's it's a great place to come for the day if you want to come out for uh, just an hour or two paddle. Uh, again, a great place to come. Very protected and uh, not any boat traffic, not any heavy boat traffic. No fast boats are allowed back in here. Uh, no jet skis are really allowed unless they're just idling. And uh, if it's a windy day, uh, you're not exposed to the, uh, the wind and the wave out on the lake like you normally would. Uh, it's just very protected and, and, and really built for kayakers. And uh, actually, when you get out here, there's actually a kayak launch. Uh, there's a boat launch you can go off of, but the kayak launch is made for kayaks. It's slick as heck. You just put, you just put your kayak on this little dock with rollers and... Um, and, and, and you slide into the water by sitting in your kayak and, uh, and, and sliding down the rollers into the water. So uh, it's, a, a, again, great way to get in the water without having to get wet, especially if you're doing it in the winter months and you don't have any, uh, any waterproof shoes. So we're coming up here, uh, we're rounding this last corner and you're now starting to see the water. And uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the twin coves. This is the uh, western cove that we're gonna kayak first. And uh, here you see there's a, uh, uh, a turn in. Right after you see the water, there's a turn in for the kayak launch. And uh, that's where we'll launch our kayaks today. Okay, so um, if, if you need to rent a kayak, uh, good news, here at the park, they actually uh, rent kayaks as well. As you see behind me, here are the kayaks that they rent. It's, uh, I just stopped in the park office and I said it's uh, $10 for one hour, it's $30 for four hours, and $50 for the day for eight hours. So if you're staying here, they'll drop it off at your cabin, uh, or if you're just coming for the day to kayak and you, need, you already have a kayak, but you need some more, or you just need to rent one, uh, they'll take it down to the kayak launch and meet you down there. So uh, yeah, check them out here if you don't have a kayak. It's a great way to get into the kayaking sport and uh, get accustomed to it and see if it's something for you. Today we're out on, uh, in, in uh, Flower Mound, Texas, in the Flower Mound Grapevine area on Lake Grapevine in the Twin Coves portion of Lake Grapevine. There's two coves here, Twin Coves, and uh, this is um, on the north shore of Lake Grapevine in Flower Mound's uh, town limits. And uh, we're gonna kayak this. This is a wonderful area uh, to kayak when you are, uh, you know, when you wanna, don't wanna get out on the main lake, you want uh, smaller water feel, but still lots of areas to explore and that's what Twin Coves is all about. There's two coves, uh, lots of fingers, lots of feeder creeks that you can go up, uh, very well protected, even on a windy day, not too rough at all for, uh, for any type of kayak to get out here and enjoy. So uh, follow along with me and enjoy the ride. When we came off, when we came off the kayak launch, we turned, uh, uh, let's see, what would that be? We turned north uh, in the Twin Coves and we're heading back into the cove and uh, that's where you see me going now. Here, let me pan ahead for you. Again, we're heading north back into the cove and the cove has a feeder creek over here on the left you can take or you can take a 90 degree right as we get back here into the very back and uh, that's the longest uh, feeder creek that you can go up and, and also the most picturesque. Um, one thing that's nice about these twin coves is they are very deep. Uh, there's a marina on the eastern side, which is equally as fun to kayak around, 
but uh, they are both very deep coves so there's no problem with uh, running aground or paddles hitting the bottom just a lot and even in drought conditions you can get back in here uh, until you get to the absolute worst part of the drought condition but even in most droughts you can get back in here so it's it's open it's pretty much open all the time here is where the cove we're out at the end of the cove and here is where we're going to turn right and uh, again real deep back here nice and wide easy to get in and out of and uh, some nice little cliffs down there at the end okay we've turned right into this finger um, off of the uh, west portion of um, of the Twin Coves and uh, sun's to our back so you got a real nice uh, lit up um, visual of what this finger looks like real nice to kayak back through very deep no problem running aground um, one thing that's really neat is you see right up in front of us you see some large cliffs they're probably 10 or 15 feet high and uh, real neat to just paddle up by. That's one of the things I like about Lake Grapevine is there's lots of rock formations, lots of big red rock formations, particularly when you get out on the main lake. And uh, that'll be a different video, but on a, on a nice calm day when you can get out on the main lake, there's lots of big cliffs that you can see big houses on top of, and it's very, very uh, picturesque and scenic. So, uh, but enjoy coming back here. Uh, just enjoy the surroundings back here as I paddle. How y'all doing? Oh, enjoying the evening. <laughs> Pretty night to be out. Oh, it's, it's incredible. Both of these coves are just beautiful. Have a good one. Here we just went by the cliffs. And if you noticed, if you turn left, now back here it starts to get a little shallower. So um, certain times of the year, uh, or if you're in drought conditions, you're gonna start to run aground here. and. There might not be much lake to go up to, but you can certainly get back to those cliffs. It's very deep up to those. So I'll go back here just for a little bit. I love kayaking the big open areas, but I also like kayaking the uh, protected tributaries and uh, um, lagoons or, or coves or whatever you want to call them uh, when I'm out here on these lakes. They're just very peaceful. You see a lot of wildlife back here as well. Uh, I'll see deer. Uh, you see big turtles, you see uh, foxes, you see coyotes, um, uh, a lot of hawks. I'm waiting to see an eagle. I hear there's eagles around here, but I haven't seen one yet. So here, I'm going to turn around here because it's getting, it's, uh, I'm going to start hitting bottom here soon. And we're into the sun, so you're not going to see anything. Those people we just passed just a little bit ago, <laughs> I, I make kayaking a workout. Uh, I, en I enjoy the beauty of being out on the water, but I also make it my fitness. So uh, a lot of times I'll uh, find people or you know things in front of me and try to catch up to them. So that's what I'm trying to do now. <laughs> we're back in the main part of the western cove that we uh, initially launched the kayak in and we're heading east out towards the open lake and the open lake from here is probably half a mile so a good bit of paddling you have a lot of area protected area that you can paddle until you get out to the open lake and then when you get to the open lake if it's a real calm day you know you can go out and kind of just uh, follow the north shoreline or if it's a windy day then just turn left if you want to do more and go down the eastern cove, which, which we will do on this paddle. If you like birds, great blue herons, great white herons, egrets, ducks, uh, depending on the season of the year and what's in migration, um, 
there's all types of birds to see out here. And if you come out here in the middle of the winter, which it's a great place to because it's so protected, um, oh, you see all types of uh, northern migratory birds that uh, have stopped off here. Here's a white heron right off to our right. One thing you'll see off to my left here is uh, there's a peninsula that separates both of these coves. And this whole peninsula is, um, it's owned by the Army Corps of Engineers, but it was leased by the town of Flower Mound for like a 100 year lease, 99 year lease that I heard. It was just recently opened in 2017 with, um, I, think, I think it's 19 cabins and they're beautiful cabins, all different sizes that you can rent for the weekend. And, uh, you know, it, don't, don't, take my, don't take me with the exact number, but I, I think it's 19 cabins. And then there's uh, an equal amount, 19, 20 or so, um, plug-in RV campsites. So, great place to come for the weekend and just relax with the family. To find out about uh, renting a cabin or getting an RV site, just go to the town of Flower Mound. Again, Flower Mound, M-O-U-N-D, Texas. Town of Flower Mound website and uh, navigate to Twin Coves Park. And, uh, and you'll see all that you need to see about that. Beautiful area. So now we're about halfway up the cove. There's probably about a quarter mile till open water. And you, that's all the way over to the left here. You see boats coming in. But uh, we're just gonna kinda slowly navigate around. Depending on how long I wanna paddle, I just kinda alter my paths. Uh, if I want a long paddle in both of these coves, I just follow the uh, shoreline as closely as I can. And, uh, you know, if you follow all the little lake, all the little tributaries and feeder rivers in both of these coves together, uh, you'll get about a six mile paddle. Um, if you, uh, you know, you just pick, pick what you want to do. You want to go a mile, you want to go, uh, you know, two miles, six miles, whatever. You can do it all here. A lot of, a lot of room to, to move around. And again, all protected. One thing I use on my iPhone, and you know, if you got an Android or any type of smartphone, is download the app Paddle Logger. Paddle Logger on the uh, App Store for your uh, smartphone carrier. And Paddle Logger is made just for paddlers. Paddle boarders, canoeists, kayakers, whatever. Um, it's, uh, it will get, track your, track your, your paddle, uh, spit it out on a map at the end of your paddle, tell you your average speed, average distance, and then it will catalog all of your trips. Like I got it back in um, March of this year, March of 2017, I loaded the app. And since March until now, September 4th, I think I've logged like 41 trips and uh, almost 200 miles. So it's a great way to keep track of uh, of you know where you've gone, how long you've gone, how often you've gone, and where you went. So really neat app. I, I recommend you you downloading it. So here off to the right, we're going to turn and just go out to the mouth of the lake real real quick, and then cut across to the other cove. And if you see, you know the to the left here, you see the other cove popping into view, and that's where the marina starts. Where that marina and all those boat slips start is uh, where the eastern Twin Cove is. So uh, we'll go back through there as well and give you a look at that. And here you see we're kind of rounding this point, heading out to open water. You know, see our whole trip, it hasn't been rough at all. So if you wanted to hold back a little bit and just follow the shoreline into the eastern cove, you're not gonna get a lot of rough water. But, uh, you know, right here, it's about an eight to 10 mile an hour wind today. And, um, you know, here at the mouth, it'll pick up with some waves and everything, but you're still very protected if you stay back in the cove. I'm just coming out here to show you the opening to the lake and cut across to the other side, the other side of the coves here. And then we'll go back in the marina area.
And like all coves that you go back into, most of them have no wake buoys. So you really, you know, boats are not allowed legally to make any waves back in these coves. So you're not gonna have to worry about um, you know, high speed boaters and jet skis and somebody uh, that might run you over. No problem at all. Today I'm paddling a uh, Jackson Journey 14 foot um, sit inside touring style kayak. Uh, long, it's longer, skinnier, about 25 inches wide, but still very roomy with a lot of cargo space. Something that allows you to really go the distance and uh, you know, if it's a windy day or you want to go camping or something like that, you can do that. Uh, for recreational purposes, I have two Jackson Tupelos and they are 12 foot recreational kayaks, which are very fun kayaks. Great kayaks for um, you know, the beginner to the intermediate, to somebody who just wants to get out on the water with a light kayak that's easy to pick up and put on top of their car, but is very, very seaworthy and, uh, and, and safe. Um, so, two wonderful kayaks. There's so many nice kayaks out there. I started kayaking about four years ago, and in four years I've owned 10 kayaks. So, uh, of course I've bought and sold them. Uh, right now I have three. And, uh, but uh, just so many kayak options out there for you, from sit inside to sit on top, to paddle boards, uh, to uh, more open cockpit, big, like, kind of resemble canoes. Um, if you're interested in getting into kayaking, just go to your local kayak store. Every city's got like a professional uh, minded kayak store where they can show you all of your options and then you can pick two or three of them and then usually they'll allow you to, you know, meet you out at a lake, let you uh, paddle them around, see which one you like. That's the way to get a kayak. And a lot of times it's best just to rent them. You know, find a place where they rent kayaks and get out there and see if you like it. So, a great way before you get all committed is, uh, is definitely to rent. So here we are coming back into the marina. And uh, I love to paddle the marinas because they're really calm. And it's fun to just look at the boats. There's always a lot of life going on back here. You know, right up here on the right is Rocking S Bar and Grill. So, uh, you know, during the summer months from like Thursday to Sunday, they're open for dinner, usually have a live band. You know, you pull into a slip here, a boat slip, even with a kayak, and, uh, and, and get a nice dinner. And then get back on the water and get back to your uh, launching spot. Today is Monday, it's actually Labor Day, so they're open today. They're not normally open on Mondays, but they're open for the Labor Day holiday. But with people going back to work in the morning, uh, things have kind of subdued here. So uh, pretty calm in here right now in terms of, you know, the amount of things going on. Right now I'm, I'm about halfway through my kayaking trip and uh, I'm at 2.47 miles with paddle logger. And uh, it also works on an Apple Watch, so uh, you know, you can put it on your smartphone, you can have it on your uh, smart watch, uh, but it's a great way to just take a look and see how far you've gone. So you can see here I'm coming out of uh, the marina area where we just were and uh, kind of paddling close by all the boats and looking, checking out all the boats. Huh. So now I just came out of that middle row of boat slips and I'm gonna go down the last row of slips and that follows the uh, shoreline so uh, and that takes us back to the end of the eastern cove so you can get back into uh, some more natural surroundings here uh, once you get back here a little bit farther but uh, again I think it's kind of fun just going back and seeing all the boats as well uh, just kind of breaks it up a little bit and then get back and see more of the natural surroundings I started thinking you know, I've been looking at kayak videos for years um, you know, but they're all centered around fishing, and, and fishing's fine if you fish, but I don't really fish. So uh, uh, I just like to get out in the water, and when it's hot, you know, find a nice little shoreline to go swimming, uh, get back in and paddle, um, you know, go out with friends, 
and uh, and family and things like that and kayak. I, I uh, you know, people often ask me, you know, where where do you kayak? And uh, it kind of struck me as odd at first because, you know, yeah, I, we, I do live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I like to get down to the coastal areas and kayak, but I do live in Dallas, Texas, and a lot of people think, oh, there's not a lot of water here. But in, in, in Dallas, within a, like a 150 mile circumference of Dallas, there's like 50 lakes. And uh, the bulk of them, huge reservoirs owned by the Army Corps of Engineers. So there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of, of lakes that you can explore. And, uh, and, and then there's a lot of rivers too. And uh, I have not done a lot on rivers, but I, I wanna get out and uh, kayak some of the major rivers like the Brazos and the Colorado and the Trinity and maybe do some extended campouts on those. But uh, a lot of people think you have to have a creek or a, or a narrow river to kayak. And that's not the case. Um, all of the cities in Texas and, and throughout the country, most cities have reservoirs at them or nearby um, if you live inland. If you live on the coast, of course, you got the bays and all the little lagoons and tributaries of the bays to kayak and explore. But, you know, my advice is uh, when you're looking at areas to kayak, um, in this case right now, if you're looking for a lake because you live inland, well, most lakes have, uh, you know, lagoons and tributaries and, and uh, coves and things like that. Just start searching them out on your phone or your iPad or your computer on the maps and zooming in and uh, taking the satellite view so you can actually see, you know, where boat launches are and, uh, or where there's shoreline. You know, with a kayak, you don't necessarily need a boat launch. All you need is just some nice shoreline to launch from uh, that doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, brambles and trees and bushes and things like that. So, and if it's a windy day, find a cove that is protected from the wind, or, you know, for example, if the wind is coming out of the south, then kayak along the south shoreline, and you will be 100% protected from the wind. If the kayaks, if the wind's coming out of the north, kayak on the north shoreline, uh, and you'll be protected from the wind. And uh, but again, in most of these big coves, you're well protected anyway. See, we passed the marina, and now we're back in the uh, in the other cove, the back of the eastern cove, and you can see this is just wide open, lots of untouched natural surrounding. The only thing that's around us is 18 miles of mountain bike trails. Um, back through all these twin coves, 18 miles of mountain bike trails that go all the way back to Grapevine Dam. When you're out on a big lake like this, just enjoying all the natural surroundings, it's hard to believe that you're in a metroplex of, oh, I think it's up to 7 million people now. Just very peaceful and protected out here. And what works for me is having a kayak that is light, that I can pick up and put on one shoulder with one hand and carry out and put in the bed of my pickup. Or um, if you have a compact car and you have some roof racks on it, like Thule or Yakima roof racks, you can, you can easily load kayaks like these on really any type of vehicle and and just you know within minutes get it out of your garage and uh, you know within minutes get it out of your garage and um, onto the top of your car or into the bed of your pickup and uh, out to the lake because the idea is not spend a whole heck of a lot of time getting ready the idea is just to grab and go it's you want to make this like uh, like riding a bike you know you don't you don't have to spend a lot of time you just go get on the bike and go well you know, with kayaking, you got to put the put the kayak in the vehicle and get out to the lake. If you're not lucky enough to live on a lake, really focusing on the speed here. Again, one of the big things, one of the big reasons I kayak is uh, for fitness. So you vary it. You do some nice easy paddling. You do some nice medium paddling, and then, you know, like a runner or a cyclist does sometimes, you pick two points, pick a visual point out there whether it's another kayaker you want to catch up to 
or whether it's uh, you just want to go paddle hard until you get to uh, a special tree. Get that heart rate up. Get it up and go. You can probably see behind me there's a probably got a pretty good weight going. Got about 50 more yards I want to do. Kayaking, it works your whole upper body. It works your abdominals because you're twisting your abs as you, as you dig that paddle in. Works your shoulders, works your lats, works your chest. Kind of a total upper body workout. Oh. Oh, now a little rest. Okay, so I caught my breath. We're starting to head out of the uh, Eastern Twin Cove now. We're gonna just hug the shoreline a little bit. We are at, uh, let's take a look at the watch. We're at 3.9 miles, so kind of nearing the completion, trying to get to five. Uh, might be a little bit shy of five miles, but uh, however many miles you can paddle, that's a good number of miles. It doesn't just kind of set a goal for yourself and do it and have fun because my motto is if you're not if you don't make fitness fun you're not going to keep on doing it and for me fun is cycling i have a road bike do a little mountain biking too but i have a road bike and a kayak and for me that's my uh that's my fitness uh of course you know do push-ups and sit-ups and all that stuff as well but uh, you know, everybody's uh, definition of fitness is a little different. And you just gotta find what's fun and you will always stick to it and you'll always do it. We're kinda coming full circle. We're just hitting it from an opposite direction. This is that peninsula. Here's all the campsites. And uh, as we head back to the kayak launch, Up in front of us, you see an A-frame pavilion. Just beyond that is a kayak uh, boat launch that we got off of and uh, when we started this trip. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the, the city of Flower Mound, when they put in this uh, campsite with all the cabins and RV hookups and opened it up in 2017, they also put this kayak boat launch in. And boy, that is nice. That, that boat launch makes it so easy to get in and out of the water. You don't have to have a boat launch, but uh, particularly in the winter months when the water's cold and you don't want to have to get in the water and you don't have any uh, dry boots or anything like that, it's, uh, it's good to use that, uh, that kayak launch and uh, makes it real easy to get in and access the water. So again, it's Cliff and I really enjoyed spending the time with you on uh, and showing you my backyard here where uh, uh, we had the Twin Coves and Flower Mound. and. Uh, you know, like, like, and subscribe to my YouTube page, and uh, the, you'll see lots more videos of kayak fitness trails, not only in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, but all over Texas that we're going to hit. And uh, I travel quite a bit for work, so uh, when I can, I'll, I'll hit kayak trails in other parts of the country. But uh, we're going to be focused on showing you how to get out there, you know, different kayak tips, camping in kayaks, all different things but all of it centered around the fitness aspect of kayaking. So again, thanks for enjoying, uh, joining me and uh, we'll talk at you later, bye.